morning. We are so grateful to have all of you here today. When we pray to God, he essentially has three answers. Yes, no, and wait. Yet he eagerly he hears us no matter when we pray. Let's sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit to this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Everyone. Good morning and welcome. I got to get in the camera here. Sorry. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for choosing to worship at New Promise this morning, whether you're here in person or online. Um, if this is a, a first or second time for you at New Promise, I invite you to fill out a yellow guest card. And if you take that to the welcome window following the service, there's a gift in exchange for that. Uh, also, there are prayer cards in the same pockets if you want to. Uh, submit a prayer for the community to be praying for. Uh, you can put that in the offering basket as that goes around. A um, couple of announcements. Most important, next Sunday we go to two services. So there will be an 8 o'clock service, a 10.30 service, and in between we'll have some different things going on, but uh, be sure and note that for next Sunday. <clears throat> Guys, Night Out is back on its regularly scheduled program. Sorry, ladies. We're returning to Cafe Sabor. It'll be this Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, contact Dana Smith and let him know you're coming. And uh, uh, so check that out. Um, not uh, next Sunday, but the following Sunday, on the 17th, between services, the council will be available in the fellowship hall four questions. So this is sort of a council coroner, an opportunity for you to share concerns or ask questions or voice your opinion. 
There it is, September 17th, before our in-between services. So we'll meet around 9.15. So I invite you to come and uh, take part in that if you have concerns or questions. For youth, we have a couple of things coming up. Um, a camp-in on September 15th. We'll start at 6.30 and end the following morning at 8 o'clock. We'll be swimming, popcorn, a movie, games. Uh, there is a sign-up for that in, uh, at the information desk for families who are interested in taking part in that. And then for the older kids, on the 18th is a movie night. This will be at the Doherty household. We're going to watch Surf's Up. And so, uh, again, I think there's a sign-up for that also at the information desk. Please let us know if you're going to come to that. Uh, a week from tomorrow, our support groups are starting up. We have a support group for, um, for uh, grief and then also for divorce or separation. And there are cards back on the information desk about both of these. Uh, there's information about how to sign up if you'd like. There's plenty of room available in those if you want to check those out. Also, an ongoing ministry that we've had at New Promise for years now is Stephen Ministry. And we're starting up another training. We only do this every two years, and that will start uh, the end of September. If that's a ministry you've ever thought that you might be interested in being involved in, uh, there's uh, information about it. This is at the information desk as well. I invite you to check that out and uh, talk to me if you would like to go through that training and be a Stephen minister. One other class that's beginning uh, September 13th is um, uh, Pastor Katie's Disciples Journey. There's also a sign up for this at the information desk. It's going to be six weeks. There's the information. If you want to know more about it, you can talk to Pastor Katie. <clears throat> but she's really excited about starting us. I think it's going to be a great class. So I invite you to check that out. Um, also, uh, there are many disasters going on. We've got Hawaii, uh, fires going on and so forth. So I would just encourage you, there are some envelopes back there. If you want to give to disaster relief through the ELCA, Pick one of these up, you can, whatever you want to give, uh, you can send this right into them. You can also drop a check in the, uh, in the offering basket today and just label it for disaster relief on the memo line. We'll see that it gets to the right place. Lastly, I need to announce that a longtime member of New Promise uh, passed away this week, Jerry Zimmerman. She had relocated to Iowa to be closer to family and she was on the hospice for a very brief time and she passed away this week. So please keep her family in prayer, and we'll let you know if there are information about services coming up. Lastly, we have a video for Labor Day. Lord, on this earth, our hands must toil, our body must work, and in our humanity, we'll also grow tired. This is one of many ways you teach us to depend on you. But within all the work you've set before us, you also require rest. And within rest, valuable lessons await us too. When we obey the command of rest, we receive the gift of learning to trust you. If we're still, we will know that you are God and that we are not. Life under our control will always end in chaos. You hold us in your hand. You give us work to bless us and those we love, and to help us make a difference for your kingdom and rest. You restore and renew. So whether we work or rest, we are loved and blessed by you. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able and to face the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Please take a moment to think about those things for which you need forgiveness.
Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fall. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you.
You, O God, are worthy to be praised. In the morning as the sun rises, at the noonday as we work and play, and at the close of day, make us mindful of you in all things that we might direct our days and deeds to your glory. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Matthew chapter 7. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among them yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seeks to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Okay. Uh, for any children in the congregation, I would invite you to come forward now. Any adults in the congregation? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll continue with our hymn of the day. I invite the congregation to stand. I invite you to press, profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today concludes the sermon series that we have been offering, reflecting on the liturgy, the order of service. And if you haven't noticed over the last few weeks, the order has kind of shifted so that we can put our focus message near that place in the service where that focus for the message is. Now, what is today? Take a guess. It's the prayers. We focused on readings, candles, sermon, offering, and now prayers. I doubt it comes as any surprise that prayer is a part of worship. Any religion, especially those whose focus is on a single deity, for example, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindu, Islam, Christian, all have prayer as an essential component in worship. Even the pagan religions prayed to their gods. I don't know about the cavemen, but prayer and worship dates way, way, way back. How far? Well, outside of Judaism, I can't be completely sure, but I can say that Abraham prayed, Moses prayed, Aaron, Miriam prayed. Her prayer came in the form of song. Noah prayed, Jonah prayed. The people of Nineveh prayed. Theirs was a repentant prayer. Kings and prophets all prayed. We have some of King David's prayers written down in the Psalms, prayers of lament, of thanksgiving, of confession. Most of those have sort of a poetic flair to them, a rhythmic quality. And so it's no surprise that worshipers put those prayers into song form for the common practice. What originated as personal prayer toward God became incorporated into the common worship life of believers. I think also very few people of faith would say that prayer isn't important. And yet how often a person prays, under what circumstances, and in what context is as varied as the colors of the rainbow. Prayer is a vital part of our relationship with God and our spiritual growth. And God wants us to come to him like child to father or friend to friend. And like any relationship, conversation, communication is important. I think to one of my mother's favorite pastimes. That was inviting friends over for tea. And in my home growing up, there was a decorative plate rack on the wall in the living room. On it were various um, styles and shapes and designs of spode china. There was an off-white lacy one with a pink painted rose in the center, a blue and white one, and one looked like yellow wildflowers. There were six different designs in all. She liked tea. And she would often drink a cup before breakfast or after dinner. And her favorite flavor 
was something called constant comment. I really don't know why it's called that, because tea doesn't talk, but the people who drink tea do. And that became a joke in the family whenever she drank it or served it to others. I would have loved to be in that room had she ever had tea with God. I think that conversation would have been very enjoyable. And I imagine like a good tea party, God wants conversation with us to be ongoing and constant. Paul in the passage from Thessalonians says, pray without ceasing an invitation to be in constant conversation with God. Not literally, as some might believe, to pray without taking a rest or having lunch, but rather to make prayer a daily part of life, an essential one, part of one's relationship with God. And I'm not talking about the people who use prayer when the need is high and accelerated as if God were some kind of vending machine, but rather those who come to God in prayer with both the big concerns and the everyday mundane things as one would a close friend. Prayer is individual, personal, yes. And Jesus himself modeled taking time away to pray, alone. This personal time with God is crucial to the relationship we have with God, but it isn't any more than corporate or communal prayer. Practicing only private prayer can lead to a Jesus and me way of thinking. Having a relationship with God is wonderful, but not apart from living in community with other Christian believers. Just as we draw close to God in personal prayer, we can also draw close to others in corporate prayer. Thessalonians reminds the people of Thessalonica how to live with and among one another. And that is in love with prayer and thanksgiving living together without harm for one another, and in doing so, finding peace. Corporate prayer is meant for us to be a way to share our burdens with one another and minister to one another. When we pray with others who care about different things than we do, we grow to share in their burdens and care and pray about things we would normally maybe not pray about in our own personal prayer life. How often has someone said to you, pray for me? And you do. After you've left that person's company, perhaps later in the day or later in the week. Most people find it easier to pray for others than it is to pray with others. What about when it's both, a pray for and a with? Those times when someone offered, can I pray for you? And then boom, it's there. They do just that, right then and there. Does that feel awkward? Is it comforting? to hear the actual words spoken? What about prayers in worship? Do you think about those prayers as we're praying them? Do you hear them as the reader prays them? Every year on confirmation retreat, I was there last weekend with the teens, I invite the kids to create the service every single part and aspect of worship. 
and the part of the service I typically have to actually choose somebody to do is the prayers. Why? Well, probably for any number of reasons, but I think perhaps the biggest is I don't know what to say. Friends, ultimately, it's not what we pray. It's that we pray. And the reading from Matthew today said, Ask, and you shall be given. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. It didn't say, Have the most eloquent words. Use them with style and grace, and all will be impressed. God will hear your prayer, no matter how it's spoken. If it's an angry prayer, say it. If it's a joyful prayer, praise it. Because it's prayer, it doesn't need to meet the approval of your language arts teacher. The prayers we pray are important enough for God to hear them, no matter how they come. The prayers we pray in worship are here for us, and they try to convey, in the broadest sense, the prayers of the church. And the church is the people. They are prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of confession, prayers for the world, for people, for specific people in our midst even. And for the most part, they're written in advance of worship, all except one. The one new promise invites the worship assistant to add of his or her own. I personally like having the worship assistant include a prayer in the prayers of worship because oftentimes there are things happening in the here and now that weigh on the hearts of worshipers as we come into the space and they need lifting up together. This type of corporate prayer where we gather and pray together is also mentioned in the Bible. One reference to gathered prayer is in Acts. They all join together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And many times in the Apostle Paul's writing, the early church gathered in prayer, and he would write to encourage them to do that regularly with one another. Today, we gather. Together, we worship. And in worship, together, we pray. And as we do these things, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we grow in faith and love toward God and, yes, one another. So as we pray, listen, set your heart on those prayers. So let us stand as we pray. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayer for the church, those in need, in all of creation. For this day and the ability to freely gather without fear to worship you, O God, we give thanks and pray for the many who would like to have a community in which to worship but can't publicly gather. 
We pray for those who need a community, but are hesitant to look for one, that they might be inspired by the Spirit and discover you are there waiting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, please remember all children who find themselves separated from parents for any reason, but especially because of disaster and war. We pray for the youngest among us who stand in need of care and compassion. Open our eyes and our hearts to the willingness to speak for the least of these. Help us to know best how to love our neighbor and provide for our neighbor's need. Lord, in your mercy. Many are in need of prayer, recognizing that the power of prayer has the ability to comfort and heal. So it is, we lift up the names of those we know who are sick, struggling in recovery, or in any way in need of prayer. Those who are listed in promising news, and those we name either silent or aloud before you now. Lord, in your mercy. We lift to you those whose lives were devastated by great losses of life and property in Maui, and those suffering from the loss of property in the storms in Florida and the Carolinas and elsewhere. We ask that their needs be provided for, especially in your name, O God. Lord, in your mercy. On this Labor Day weekend, We are ever grateful for the ability to use the individual skills and gifts you have given us, each of us, so that we might be able to work. We recognize specifically all who labor for the sake of others, those in the medical professions, those who work as emergency responders, and those who serve in the armed forces. Bless our labors and direct them to your good. Lord, in your mercy. All these prayers, O God, and those known to you that remain unspoken this day, we lift to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that sign of peace.
invite you to stand as we receive our gifts and elements. God, you hear every word spoken and unspoken and provide for our every need. Receive now our thanksgivings for all that you are and all that you have been for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right that we should give God thanks and praise. For on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who lives in relationship to his people, invites all to the table to receive in remembrance of Jesus' saving grace. Come, the table is ready.
I invite you to rise as you are able. Lord, at this table, we gather with all your saints, past and present, with those who gather in congregations around the world and with our homebound who will receive by home communion. Renew us in the gift of your body and blood that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit. Peace, share God's peace.